We need food to survive, but instead of eating simple, healthy meals, we started to add preservatives, corn syrup, and ketchup to food. And now, kids don't even know what a pineapple is or where it grows. I would ask the students if they knew what it was, and the most common reply I got is that's where SpongeBob lives. Raise your hand if you have ever had a fresh tomato like this one before. These kids at Watterson Trail Elementary actually like to eat their veggies, mostly thanks to a program the school has put in place of preparing a fruit or vegetable snack for each child three times a week. This is a great way to expose them to new fruits and vegetables that they may not have tried at home. My favorite fruits and vegetables are um, strawberries, blackberries, kiwis, um, apples, grapes. I was really excited about trying foods that we I never tried before and I turned out liking them. Were you surprised about that? Yes. The only way to know if you like something is to try something new. Today they're serving tomatoes. Some kids just look at them, but many others dig right in. They're juicier. It makes you get muscles. And they healthy for you. The school joined the program again this year, along with 13 other JCPS schools, in an effort to challenge kids to eat more healthy meals. The kids are just excited. They want to feel it. They want to taste it. And some of them like it and some of them don't. We do kind of talk about what a tomato is, what it looks like, where it's grown, uh, where are other places in the world people eat these types of things, what kind of things you can do with it. So there is a 10 to 15 minute educational piece that goes with each one that we do. When food comes from far away, items are picked before they're ripe and they lose a lot of natural flavor. This year, JCPS is trying to incorporate as many local fruits and vegetables as possible. They were really good. I like playing food. Students do need to know where food comes from, and we have several farmers who have agreed to come and talk to the students, or we're going to go and take pictures of farmers so that you know students see a farmer in the field of tomatoes or see farmers picking apples so that they can make that connection and it supports our local economy. Hi, this is Sarah. Sarah Fritchner is helping JCPS and local restaurants to coordinate that effort, linking local farmers and new customers, making the process efficient and more affordable. In Louisville, we spend $3 billion on food. That could be at school lunch, restaurants, the Kroger. We want more of that food to include food from Kentucky, food that's grown in Kentucky, you know, made into products in Kentucky. We want to help Kentucky farmers. This farm-to-table project is largely funded through tobacco settlement dollars, aimed at turning former tobacco farms into food producers. It's not money, it's the guarantee. It's something they've done, their fathers did, their grandfathers did. Do you go organic? Do you go farmer's market? Do you grow corn? We try to show them there's a market, and we try and and get the market there for them. They need their attention. There we are. Patrick and Lita Kennedy turned in their steady paycheck about 20 years ago and now operate a 100-acre natural beef and dairy farm in Taylorsville on land that was once used to grow and dry tobacco. When I bought this place back in 90, it was just a beef, cattle, and tobacco operation. We had to transition out of tobacco. We knew it was for us, not a sustainable model to keep the business going. We had eggs, we did soap, we started going to farmer's markets, and we started getting a little return on our money, and people were interested in what we were doing. In fact, they started Cloverdale Creamery, their raw milk cheese dairy, in 2010 with the help of Sarah Fritchner. Sarah's been a great help for us as far as feedback and information and encouragement as well on the uh, cheese production. I've had her do some tastings of the product, give me some feedback, let us know where we need to make improvements. They're just getting the dairy off the ground, but hopeful for what it'll bring. This is the double Gloucester. Right now we're making three varieties and we need to get up to about five or six varieties. Yeah. Right now they run a kind of cooperative farm where they house these Owen County Swiss cows and in exchange they get help taking care of them and milk to produce their cheese. We had our recipes down for our cheese making. We had a number of Jersey cows, but didn't have quite enough volume of milk. The young men here had a dairy, but had, were running out of room, and it's been a good fit so far. The Kennedys hire locally as much as possible. We try to make connections, try to build networks with people. My wife and I, we can only do so much. So we find out what we're good at and try to get other people in places where they're comfortable doing things they want to do. Like this Kentucky-based feed company. 
Every month, the Kennedys spend thousands of dollars to feed their cows. And they've built comfortable new shelters using local contractors and workers, too. It's both a housing facility and a feeding facility for the animals. They're in perfect comfort here. They get to stay on their compost bedding. Uh, they're not on concrete. They have access to the pasture. They can go out and, and do what they want to do, just, just be cows. Local restaurants like Patrick O'Shea's on Main Street downtown are seeing the advantages of using local products. It's all in season, it's fresh, and it's the best there is available. People can tell, they, they react to it, it's kind of cool. And they're usually really interested, in, like, where are, we, where are you getting all your stuff? Where is all this stuff? And, you know, just to be able to tell them from up the road, that's, I think it's awesome. They've added a Stone Cross Farms pork burger to their menu that's developed some loyal fans. He came in every Wednesday night and just loved it, loved it, loved it. It's his favorite thing, and yes, he tattooed it on himself. <laughs> right now, Sarah Fritchner is busy connecting institutions and producers and restaurants, but she hopes that one day the local food system will be able to sustain itself. I would hope that the marketplace will take over once everyone realizes how great local food can be, um, once farmers get comfortable with the, the systems, once the systems exist. Weighs out to be about 275. Okay. By having more fresh and local foods in the marketplace, more people will have access to them. They'll be affordable and help support not just the farmers, but many related businesses throughout Kentucky. Why can't we produce our own food in Kentucky? We did it 100 years ago, why can't we do it now? Theoretically, it could be better tasting and more nutritious. If something produced, for instance, is better tasting, we're likely to eat more of it. If we eat more of it, we'll be healthier. And everyone will know the sweet taste of a fresh Kentucky tomato.